In this bucket, I have everything I need to make a superb brown dye, a leather dye, a fabric dye, an effective wood stain. It's natural, it's free, and it's easy. Let me show you how to make it. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the workshop. My name's Hugh, and today we're gonna to work on making dye, specifically a brown dye. The dye we're gonna make is made from walnut skins, and it's very, very useful and very, very flexible. It can dye almost anything. It can dye wood, it can dye leather, it can dye fabric, really, really good. Why I particularly like this dye, and why I think if you're going to make homemade dyes, this is one to start with, is it doesn't require a mordant. There we go, let's get into geek speak. Most water-soluble dyes are water-soluble, which is a problem because when you've dyed the workpiece, if that workpiece gets wet again, the dye runs, it reabsorbs into the water and it runs. To avoid that happening, a chemical is used called a mordant, which once the dye is dried, it is fixed permanently to the workpiece and therefore it's watertight. Walnut dye doesn't need a mordant. You can make the dye, apply it, there's nothing else required. So it's completely free, completely natural, doesn't involve any nasty chemicals and is very, very effective. So today we're gonna make a walnut dye. And the first thing to do is to get some walnut skins. Now, we've got walnut trees here, we've planted them, but they're not yielding yet much in the way of nuts. So let's nip across the road to engineer Dave's mature walnut tree and get some walnut skins. What I'm trying to show here is what a walnut actually looks like on a tree. Because I know a lot of people haven't seen them these days. This is a walnut on a tree. And the bit we're after is that green outer husk of the walnut. Not the bit that we're all more familiar with, the hard inner nut. In fact, for this process, we don't need those. So those can go back to engineer Dave and he does love a walnut. Although he's always really generous and brings us around a few bucketfuls each year to enjoy. This is what we've gathered. It's a load of walnut husks. And you can see that some are green, some are more of a brown color, and some have gone completely black. And that's a function of time. As they peel away from the nut itself and the air gets to them, they get darker and darker in color. So if you gather all green ones, I suggest leave them out in the air in the bucket for a couple of weeks and let them get to this sort of juicy black state because that will liberate much more dye. Now you're going to notice that I'm using a stainless steel bowl. I'm wearing gloves. The spoons I'm going to use are steel because we're making dye. And if we gather in a wicker basket, we'll dye the basket. Trust me, if you pick lots of walnuts with bare hands, you'll end up with brown fingertips. So I'm trying to use inorganic material for the dyeing process to avoid dyeing the bowls, the baskets, the pans, etc. So what I'm doing here is just picking over all of the skins. The clean picked over skins go in a pan of hot water. Any bits of grass, twig or other material are left out. Now, we're gonna get some foreign stuff. I can see a bit of grass there already. And don't worry too much, it'll get filtered out at the end, but I don't want anything in the dye that's unpleasant. Whilst I'm doing this, just take a look at that water. This is what I mean about walnuts are an effective dye. You can see in a few seconds, 
of dropping these husks into hot water, how brown that water's going. And that's the sort of colour that we're looking for and how we're going to make our dye. Now some people will tell you to simply pop the husks into cold water and leave it for a good long time. And I'm sure that's effective, but I believe that by putting them into hot water and for boiling them for a while, you break down the cell structure of the walnut husks and that releases more of the dyeing material. And this is a walnut. And that's what I mean about the husks and the inner nut. A lot of people never see a husk. All they see is that in their mixed nuts at Christmas. That's our husks in water. And I want you to notice there is barely enough water to cover the husks. You don't want to make your dye very pale and very runny. You can always dilute it later. So what you really want is just enough water to cover your husks. Let's bring that up to the boil. As you heat up your dye, give it a stir every now and again. Just make sure the walnuts don't stick to the bottom of the pan. Take a look at the colour we're getting there. That's what we're looking for. Now obviously we're going to have to clean it all up and filter it, but the colour of that is tremendous. You can see from the escaping steam that we've got that up to temperature. And that foam is what I'm looking for. That foam says all those walnut skins are breaking down and releasing all that colour into the water. I'm going to simmer that for about 15 minutes then I'm going to leave it to cool and just let it stand for two or three days to give up all its colour into the water. But already, look at it, look at the depth of colour that we've already got in that liquid. It's simmered away for 15 minutes now and I'm going to leave it for a few days just for all that colour to infuse into the liquid. But before I do, come in close and have a look at just how dark that dye has become. Are you ready? Look how dark that is. Look at it. Wonderful colour. And that's why I like to boil up the walnut husks as the first step of dye making. It breaks open those cells and allows the walnut husks to give up all their colour. Now we're going to let that cool and then let it cold infuse for a few days just so the last of the colour can leach out from the husks. And then we'll come back and look at the rest of the process. So three days have gone past for us here and I have just reboiled our dye mixture just to stir everything up, squeeze out the last drops of colour. Let's take a look at it in a minute and then what we're going to do is we're going to strain off the solids to get rid of all those walnut husks etc and then we're going to filter the dye through a cloth to get rid of any small particles because we want a nice clean liquid dye and then we're going to work with that dye. So let's take a look. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Look at the colour. So the next step is to strain off all this solid material, the husks etc and get down to a liquid that we can filter and make really clean. So the process here is fairly simple. Just using an old ladle, run the liquid through a sieve, straining off the solids into a clean stainless steel vessel. If you're doing this in your kitchen, please put down plenty of newspaper, bit of plastic, something to stop yourself staining your work surfaces. When you're straining off your solids, use the back of your ladle or your spoon 
to push down and squeeze them like squeezing liquid from a sponge. Because often the darkest, most richly coloured material is that that's been sitting inside the pulp of the walnut husks. So you really want to try as best you can and squeeze them dry so the best dye drops into the pan below. So having strained off the large matter, I've washed everything up and I'm going to use the sieve again. But before we use it this time, we're going to line it just with a couple of layers of muslin or cheesecloth. And then we're going to run the liquid through that cloth just to catch any tiny particles that were fine enough to get through the sieve originally. Please, if you're doing this, bear in mind this will stain the cloth that you filter through. If you look carefully in there, you can see almost like little dust particles at the bottom. And straining through cloth will get rid of them. And that is us more or less done with making the dye. I've taken some and put it into a glass vessel here. And the rest is in this smaller saucepan. On a thought, it might be interesting for you to see how we do some dyeing. So I'm going to show a few different things that we could dye with our walnut dye. So in here we've got the walnut dye and this is called a dye bath and I'm heating it up. Here we've got a piece of white cotton from the rag box and I'm going to bring that dye bath up to the boil then I'm going to put the cloth in and I'm going to keep it there moving it gently for 90 minutes two hours then I'm going to turn the heat off I'm going to let it cool overnight with the cloth still in the dye bath. So you can see that our dye bar is now hot. In goes our workpiece. And I'm using an old tent peg because it's steel to push that in. And I want it open so the dye can penetrate. I don't want to scrunch it up in a tight ball. And I'm just going to keep that on a very low heat. It's a sort of gentle simmer now. As I said, for 90 minutes to two hours. This is a great way to use our natural dye. This is hand spun, undyed sheep's wool. And it's beautiful in white. And Fiona does fabulous knitting with it in its undyed state. But sometimes you want a colour. So we're going to dye this piece as a test piece using our natural vegetable dye. The way to do that, we put it in the hot dye bath in a similar way to fabric for 90 minutes to two hours, let it cool and leave it in the dye bath overnight. Now what we've got here is a block of sawn oak. And I'm gonna use this you could argue it still as a wood dye, but I think of it more as a wood stain. So I'm going to put some of our walnut mixture onto this oak, just so you can see the difference it makes in terms of colour. And often when I see it in the vat, in a dye bath, I think it's going to result in a colour that is considerably darker than it actually is. What I'm doing here is just applying another coat to part of the wood. Here, I've got a piece of veg tanned leather and I want to use our walnut dye to give that a lovely colour. Now when dyeing leather, particularly with a water-based dye, it is sensible to wet the leather first to help the dye take evenly. So here, just a cotton wool ball, some clean water, and we're going to let the leather soak that water up before we put the dye on. Now we're going to apply the dye to the leather. You can buy fancy tools to do this. I'm just using a cotton wool ball 
and a pair of nose pliers. Well, we've left those work pieces in the dye bath overnight. Unfortunately, today it is raining very hard on the wriggly tin roof of the workshop, so please forgive any rain noise in the background. Next job then is to rinse out any surplus dye from the fabric and the wool. There we are. That's what we're left with. After the overnight soak. Now, the first job is just to squeeze out wearing gloves, bear in mind it's dye all the excess dye from the fabric and then what we're going to do is rinse it in clean water until that water doesn't change colour and that means that all the excess dye has come off the fabric. And here is our wool and we're going to do the same thing with that squeezing out all the dye and then rinsing it well repeatedly I'm sure that people who are good at dyeing will know a better way of doing this but I found no better way of getting the dye out and using gloves and agitating the fabric or the wool in the water. Every now and again you're going to need to change the water. So I'll use one of my stainless steel bowls, squeeze out the mucky water, put the workpiece in there, And then we'll change the rinsing water. Back into clean water and you can see the colours changing but nowhere near as much when we put the work pieces in. So we'll give that another rub, keep changing the water until the water doesn't take on the colour. about that no more dye is leaching out of the work pieces so now I'm going to set them to dry everything's dried overnight so coming close let's take a look at what we can achieve with a homemade walnut dye last piece of the white cotton cloth we started with and here's another piece after it's been through the dye bath it's almost a sort of desert tan, coyote brown, that kind of colour. You can achieve darker colours either by adding various chemicals to the dye bath or by dyeing with repeated iterations. Either works reasonably well. But that's a good colour fast dye that's worked really well, cost nothing at all. Let's take a look at the wool. This gorgeous creamy white wool is hand spun by our lovely friend Annette. And honestly, it doesn't need changing, but look at that. Look at that beautifully rich, almost horse chestnut brown that that goes in our walnut dye. Here's our leather. This is an undyed section. That's had one coat, that's had two coats, and that's had three coats of the walnut dye. And you can see the color intensity building up. If this was a real work piece, I'd have tried to dye it a bit more evenly, but I'm just trying to show that you can get a really good variation of shade and depth of colour using this dye.
Let's take a look at how the walnut dye, walnut stain works on wood. This is undyed oak. This has had one coat, two coats and three coats of the walnut dye. And you can see the intensity of the colour building up, but I also think the stain actually brings out and highlights the beauty of the grain. I wanted to finish off and just share this. It's just an old piece of hardwood. Started off looking like that and I gave it a couple of coats of stain and finished it with our homemade furniture wax. I wanted to show how these kind of homemade products really can enhance the beauty of wood and they're every bit as good as the commercial stuff. Well there we are, that's walnut dye, a really good home dye made from free ingredients that gives a lovely rich brown colour without need for a mordant on wood and leather and fabric and wool and many other things besides including your hands if you forget to wear gloves. We really hope you've enjoyed that and if you have could you spare us five seconds and give us a thumbs up down below. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next. We could do a black dye, would you like to see that? What about varnish? Maybe homemade glue. You tell us and we'll make it. And if you'd like to see those videos, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already and hit the bell next to it and you'll hear every time we upload a new video or whatever you do. Come back and see us soon. Take care.